Before Mari and Jerry and Judge Judy ruled the airwaves. Before the pay-per-view smackdowns. Before Michael Jackson and his antics fascinated the public. There was only one place to see the bizarre, the unusual, the weird, and the strange. It was the traveling sideshow. And every year when the circus or carnival came to town, for the small price of admission, you could gawk at a parade of midgets, giants and strongmen, fat men and fat women, sword swallowers, fire eaters, alligator men, and tattooed women. Today, the sideshow is an institution in twilight. A hard scrabble patch of Americana quickly fading from the cultural fabric of our nation. Yet on a few carnival lots and fairgrounds, we can still find remnants of this once great tradition. A tantalizing spectacle of human oddities and outsiders. Live performers who pique our interest with morbid curiosity and capture our imagination with timeless acts and daring feats. All this for the cost of a dollar or two. Welcome to the Traveling Sideshow, where you will be shocked and amazed. And here tonight on our stage, you're going to see strange people alive doing strange things. They're real, they're human, they're alive. It's the closing days of the Georgia State Fair, one of the last stops for Ward Hall and his world of wonders after a long carnival season. Now, in his 55th year on the road, Ward Hall runs the last traveling sideshow with human oddities. It's showtime! The sideshow as we know it, which started with Barnum, is indigenous to the United States. There were shows, there were human oddities in Europe or in England, but only in America. It's the ten and one show. Ten and one is the carnival term for the sideshow, referring to the number of acts performed under one tent. That's a loose term because it could be 13 acts, it could be seven acts, but it would still be called a ten and one sideshow. You know, there might be uh, people with physical abnormalities, like the fat lady or the world's tallest man or things like that. And then there would pe be people that would do uh, different stunts like sword swallowing, fire eating, and things like that. The future of tented side shows, there isn't one. It's over now. And, and it's really a shame because the intimacy that is integral in being in a show of this sort, you know, a lot of times you're playing for 40 or 50 people, and they're right up close, they can see you right up close. You know, there really is a, a part of Americana that just will never be recreated again. And it's, and it's really a shame. I, I'm really going to miss it. As fast as you wish. The world of wonders captures a bygone era, a time when the public had to leave their homes to find good entertainment. Under the tent, one can still find an assortment of fire eaters, fat men, and shocking acts. In the old days, there were hundreds of shows on a carnival midway. And so in my head, I had thought that I was going to kind of come out to something like that. Like I'd be on this, working at the carnival, but there would be a lot more shows. And so when I got out here, it wasn't anything like that. And I found that we're the last traveling sideshow this big with live acts in it. After working with World of Wonders for three years, Felicity and her husband Molotov are joining a Wild West show in the next season. It's a shame that I wasn't born earlier where I would have been able to really cash in on these skills. We're happy to be able to make a living sword swallowing, knife throwing, whip cracking, doing all these things that only Ward Hall will hire you to do that. You really can't make a living break in point. It would still be a dying industry and it's sad, but at the same time, it's exciting for me just being on the tail end of the comet because you're traveling every day, you're doing a lot of shows every day. Not a lot has changed in that respect since they were in wagons. There was a time when the carnival or circus or even the state fair came to town that everyone would come out to greet its arrival. 
It might be the only live entertainment for miles around, and it would electrify a community. There was every manner of show possible, from wild to the exotic to the downright scary. But one thing was certain, there was always a sideshow. There's excitement everywhere. The circus is here. Everyone is headed for the big top to thrill to and cheer the fun makers, daredevils, freaks, and ferocious performing animals. Now, folks, step right this way to the bigger, better, more exciting sideshow. P.T. Barnum is credited as being the father of the sideshow. He perfected the art of showmanship at his American Museum in New York City by putting human oddities on display. The public was fascinated by the likes of General Tom Thumb, Chang and Ang, the original Siamese twins, Jojo the dog-faced boy, and William Henry Jackson became Zip the Pinhead, the original What Is It? In later years, when live attractions weren't nearby, there was always the newsreel, footage of Johnny Eck the half-boy, and William Perry, otherwise known as Popeye, entertained audiences in movie theaters. Robert Earl Hughes of Bayless, Illinois, is just 20 years old and carrying around those 720 pounds would tire out a fellow twice his age. His mother, Mrs. Georgia Hughes, says he was a perfectly normal child at birth, and his abnormal growth resulted when he burst a gland in his neck. With two six-foot tape measures sewn together, it's just a neat 109 inches around Robert's equator. The appetite for sideshow freaks became insatiable, but the newsreel was no substitute for the real thing, and the public continued their love affair with human oddities at the circus and carnival midway. But the sideshow was just one aspect of the midway experience. There were over 1,000 other shows. Every little carnival at that time had about six rides and five or six shows. A medium-sized carnival would have 12 rides and 15 shows, and a big carnival would have 20 rides and 25 shows. Going to the fair was a family experience. There was something for everyone. Rides for the kids, shows for the adults. No one was left out. It was family entertainment at its best. We were a flavor. You have to have a little this, a little that. So that's what the fair was about. There was a side show, there was a fat show, there was a motodrome, there was this, there was that. That made the taste, the flavor of a fair. At one point, there may have been thousands of shows crisscrossing the country each summer. From pygmy villages to Wild West shows, practically any subject was covered. They had the big minstrel show, they had the big girl review, they had another posing show, they had a big monkey show, they had a big torture show, they had a big ten-in-one side show, they had a big ten-in-one illusion show, and probably 15 grind shows. Your attention please to the lovely little lady on my right. The grind show was one of the staples of the midway. The objective was to move people through fast. It's a grind show. You're doing 20 shows a day, sometimes more. And your throat gets tired and you don't talk. You just, you know, you don't want to talk to people. You just gonna do this show, swallow the sword, and let them go on to the next thing. Lady Sandra was telling me how she used to clean them with Listerine and then put oil. You know. She'd lightly put vegetable oil on just to keep her throat from getting sore from swallowing swords all day. But there was one style of show that put a different spin on the word grind. A carnival in the 20s, 30s, 40s even, even into the 50s, brought into town a certain amount of wonderful wickedness. Behold, 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 the Vestal Virgins. These young ladies are prepared to perform for your edification. They had girl shows. They had reviews with dancing girls. They danced the hoochie coochie. They grind and they bump. And in the later years, they do strip. Ladies and gentlemen, we offer you the ceremonial ritual of love. This artistic presentation has been handed down through the ages. So step right into the tent with the little ladies. All right, girls, in you go. Hurry, hurry, hurry. 25 cents? In this, 